Hey, what is going on, SMT Nation? It's your boy, the SMT. Uh, we're going to take you uh, step by step through some access new to Verizon. We're going to take a look at their sub 6 gigahertz 5G network access. Now, I guess we'll call this still technically unofficial. Not everybody is able to access this, even with a 5G device on the Verizon wireless network. It looks like there are some limitations. You know, what's going on in terms of a market to market basis? Certain devices have access, certain ones do not. Certain bands are accessible for some people and other bands are not. But uh, luckily here in the CLE, you know, on my particular site that I'm testing, I'm able to get the access. So we're just doing a quick little test here. This is unselected 5G sub 6 gigahertz access on the Samsung Galaxy S20 Plus. And this device is AT&T firmware. So I don't know if that matters. I know uh, tech extremist Hester, Hector was talking about this, and uh, you know I was able to confirm this on other devices as well. But uh, here it is on this variant of the phone. So you'll see in the upper right-hand corner that is Verizon Wireless 5G. There are no millimeter wave nodes in sight. Uh, you know that that's not what I'm connecting to. This is obviously sub six gigahertz. So here's a view of the connection from the Signal Check Pro app. Uh, you'll see the you know the bandwidth there. It's a three carrier aggregation setting. Uh, normal LTE is a four carrier aggregation setting here on the site. So clearly a different configuration. I'm just gonna go ahead and do some speed testing so you could see kind of what's going on there. For this particular configuration, it's a 20 megahertz. Uh, this is an AWS connection, so band 66, along with five megahertz of band 13 and five megahertz of band two. Now, under normal circumstances, with the four carrier aggregation of LTE bands, there's much more bandwidth. So I'm actually losing bandwidth being connected to 5G in this case. So this is kind of some of the problems that we're seeing with this version of non-standalone 5G. You're losing, you know, access to certain amounts of bandwidth when you switch over to, you know, the NR side of things. So what we're noticing is that speed testing on NR with sub-6 gigahertz on you know, T-Mobile and AT&T, and now even with Verizon, you're going to see slower speeds. It's not as fast as the regular LTE. Kind of frustrating, but I wanted to show you uh, what the access looks like just to show you that it is connected to band 2, band 5, and band 66. So you'll see the configuration here if you go to Samsung Band Selector, an app from the Play Store. You'll see band 2 for N2. <clears throat> NR and you'll see uh, band 5 and band 66 and then N260 is that's the millimeter wave so 39 gigahertz all right so um you know there there's that situation you know you can clearly see that those bands are enabled on this device and through the sim card I'm just going to go ahead and run them through the gauntlet let's connect to each one individually now of course this is not standalone this is non-standalone 5G so it does require LT is the backbone to operate so I'm going to isolate it. We're going to start with band 2. This is PCS spectrum. This is a mid-band spectrum frequency. We're going to isolate it. This is the only band that I'm connected to. So the speed test, again, nothing crazy. These are very typical of LTE speeds. In no way, shape, or form am I saying that DSS, which is likely how this is configured, dynamic spectrum sharing in which you have shared spectrum, whether it's on the LTE side or the NR side, right? It is not a long-term solution. This is a short-term solution to getting access to NR. All right, so that was the N2 configuration. We're gonna go ahead and switch over to N5. This is 850 megahertz, band five is a low band spectrum holding. All right, so let's see what this does for us. Now it's a smaller channel. The expectation is slower speeds because of the less bandwidth. And that's what we see. It's much slower. Probably about five times slower, right? Or more. All right, with the mid band, we were seeing something around 80 megabits per second or so. Here, we're only getting about 17 on the downlink. So clearly a difference in, you know, performance on the downlink speed. Bandwidth is just very different. 20 megahertz of band uh, of N, uh, N2 versus you know five megahertz or 10 megahertz I don't, i'm not sure about the the carry aggregation there I'm not really sure 100 percent but my expectation is that with the mid band we're going to see faster speeds let's go ahead and test uh, i'll undo the n5 and let's activate the n66 here and we'll see what we get 
and hopefully we we can see a, a difference in this so and, and we, that's the expectation that's what we expect to see so let's see and we do all right so it looks like we're kind of approaching that 90 to 100 megabit per second mark all right kind of coming down there a little bit all right so i know the speed test only reads lte but i did select for the end bands i'm not sure what the situa situation is there with ukla i don't know if there has to be some kind of configuration change on the registry side with the tower sites and with the network but uh the icon in the top right hand corner says 5g i've selected for the end variation of these bands all right so if you take a look at the three selections the first one being the n2 the second one being the n5 and the third being the n66 and i wanted to make sure i isolated that so i could share with you guys what exactly the performance looks like all right so i'm going to just go ahead i'm going to undo the selection so that way there is no selected band and i'm going to see what i get after undoing it we're just going to put all the bands we're going to let it automatically configure and see what happens all right because i i think you know like for the the normal user they're not going into band selector they're not going to be going in all these different settings and trying to you know do whatever with different nr bands and, and lte bands they're just going to use the device as is and you know see how it works so that's kind of what i'm doing here this is just a speed test you know it's reading the icon it's showing 5g uh, the one thing i will say to give you some insight on what's been going on for the last 24 to 48 hours is you know i've been seeing the 5g stick around for a while then i see it coming and going i've seen it in multiple different devices with different firmwares unlocked you know carrier versions i've i've seen it all so really um really sporadic in certain phones with certain firmware it's been more predictable in others again i i still say that this is you know a situation where it's unofficial you know people are accessing it i'm seeing it all over twitter uh you know and dealing with some of my cohorts you know kind of having conversations with uh some engineering friends and confidants as well as you know tyrone from tech life and communications with uh hector tech extremist we're kind of seeing the same things right and and we're kind of we're kind and in discussions with like you know carlos s tech we're, we're kind of on the same page right we see the you know the the dss as a stopgap and getting to standalone services that are going to be more of a difference maker you know is this going to be helpful i think it is you know you're going to see some efficiency improvements by being on the nr side in the case of midband the low band is questionable i'm not really a big fan you know of you know trying to promote big 5g through skinny channels and limited bandwidth so you know the low band 5g thing is just not something i'm excited about the mid band obviously i am the millimeter wave i clearly am but uh like i said we won't get major changes to our performances until we get new added spectrum to the table for verizon and any carrier for that matter anyways do check out some of the links in the description box ways to donate the patreon page also the podcast app uh different apps the platforms we have are there check those things out if you want to get more involved with the community the twitter handle it's all there thank you guys for watching give this video a like a share and uh hopefully we'll check you out on the next one peace